Hey everyone, I was recently asked to do an interview to talk a little bit about my background. Uh, my answer to them was that I actually prefer people continue believing that I'm new to this game and I have very little experience because the more people know about you, the more they use to attack you. With that said, I realize that I've been doing all of you a disservice not telling you more about the work I've done in the past. Uh, a lot of that work was what developed my experience, um, the experience that I have today that I use to search for the missing. And I think all of you and anyone new to our channel deserves to know my background and why I would be interested in doing this kind of work. So if any of you existing members have heard any of this before, I apologize. Uh, this one's for the new folks, maybe who don't know me or my background very well. So here goes. My name is Ryan, and since 2006, I've been a researcher and a writer in some capacity over the years. I've written thousands of articles about technology, including how parents can protect their, ch their children from online predators. Um, I've researched and written exposés about scams and scam artists in ufology and the paranormal. I've covered fringe science claims, government de declassified projects, and religious cults, and much more. Um, during the course of that research, I established friendships with, with two CIA scientists with the Science and Technology Division, Dr. Ron Pandolfi, who was, at the time I met him, a current analyst there, and Dr. Christopher Green, who uh, had that same role formally in the 1980s. Dr. Green was at the forefront of the CIA's involvement and funding of SRI, um, the, re the, Stan the Stanford Research Institute's research into remote viewing, which was believed to be a form of psychic ability where humans could see places and people from a distance. My research into those projects was ultimately to debunk the reality, despite the fact that a number of men who'd been involved in the U.S. Army's version of this, depicted in the movie The Men Who Stare at Goats, are all still actively selling their services to, the, to teach the general public how to remote view. In the process of doing that research, I was researching and interviewing or attempting to interview people like Colonel John B. Alexander, who I did interview, Dr. Harold Putoff, uh, who I could only interview through email, um, and others. I had set out to prove that these people and others had milked wealthy, high-risk investors of millions. I believe I was successful in this, but as with most topics like zero-point energy and anti-gravity, believers will continue to believe no matter how much hard evidence you put in front of them. To this day, I still feel that my friend Dr. Green had allowed his mind to become too open when deciding on whether or not the CIA should fund remote viewing research, but I also believe he meant well and at least attempted to trust the scientific process along the way. I had also done a lot of work debunking UFO sightings or abduction claims. What I learned quickly while researching that field was that for every nine UFO or, or abduction sightings, there would be one case that could not be debunked. I quickly learned that like most paranormal phenomenon that science has yet to fully explore, there are a lot of scammers, fraudsters, and liars. Most of them are out for money. Yet I never could get myself to throw the baby out with the bathwater because I kept sensing that somewhere in that mess of scams, there were glimpses of a potential scientific discovery. I came to believe that they either seem to be settings of our own government's top secret advanced aircraft, or they are, they are advanced aircraft from other countries intruding upon our airspace. Author Gus Rasso, while writing an article titled, Is Uncle Sam a Closet Ufologist, decided to interview me as one of his sources. At the conclusion of his article, he wrote the following. The opinion of Ryan Dubay appears inarguable. Quote, if the field of ufology could be cleaned of the rubbish, we may find that there remains very valid and important evidence that demand our attention. Unquote. My interest in finding truth wasn't only in parapsychology and ufology, but also religion. I had always been intrigued by the, pra by the practice of exorcism by the Catholic Church, and at one point I wanted to understand whether any of the phenomenon ever portrayed in the movies and TV had any basis in reality. To do this, I wanted to find the most expert source on the topic of exorcism. 
I searched for leaders in the Catholic Church who had taken part of this practice at the very beginning of when the Church did do exorcisms. My search led, led me to a man named Father Jose Antonio Fourier. He was Spain's very first exorcist and was the man who trained other priests to perform the ritual throughout the rest of Spain. I asked Father Fourier if he felt any of the victims of possession were simply suffering from a mental disorder. Father Fourier said that most of the people who came to him for advice or counseling for what they believed were, were possession were perfectly normal people. And 25 to 30 percent of them even doubted that their issues were demonic. He told me that his test for presence of the demonic was to see their reaction to when he prayed for them. He said, and I quote, only praying can give you the answer. Father Fortier did admit to me, though, that less than 1% of the people who sought him for help were actually possessed. An interesting phrase he said to me, though, was this. Many people suffer from demons, but don't suffer from possession. Again, my goal was always to ask for proof of actual paranormal events. So toward the end of the interview, I started asking the questions I really wanted to ask. What were some unexplainable phenomena he witnessed with his own eyes? Father Fortier told me that he asked for one nine-year-old's child's name in Latin as a test. She told everyone in the room that the father was asking for her name. Other things he said he had witnessed over time, including people speaking in other languages, great strength, knowledge of things impossible for them to know, and also, and I quote, levitation twice. With all that said, I have to admit that my own opinion of the reality of exorcism and demonic possession remains undecided. I simply don't have enough evidence to make a decision either way. Weird science wasn't my only topic when it came to research through the years. Uh, the use of technology as both, as both offense and defense against people in society intrigued me as well. During the Trump campaign, I had picked up on a Facebook post making wild claims about members of the Democratic Party. I traced the publication ownership back to a Russian paramilitary organization that was also actively publishing propaganda against freedom fighters inside Iran that were fighting to take down the Irani Iranian regime. That was the same regime that was attempting to establish itself as a nuclear power in the region. Not long after I had written about this propaganda group, the news media eventually exposed the massive Russian propaganda campaign on Facebook during the U.S. election that year. In addition to debunking false information online, I was also looking at how good guys are defending our country. I dove into an article about protecting children from online predators who pose as children online in order to start conversations with young children on social networks. In the process of doing so, I was lucky enough to get an interview with Russ Brown, who was with the Boston FBI Cybercrimes Division at the time that I interviewed him. Uh, Russ detailed the efforts that teams within the FBI go through to infiltrate online pedophile rings. In my conclusion of that article, of that interview and article, I wrote to parents reading the article, quote, the most important thing is to talk to your kids about these dangers. They are real and shouldn't be ignored. Everything I've just described to you is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the mysteries and stories that I've researched and written about. Since 2006, I've written, a th I've written thousands of articles, and I'm currently listed as a journalist on Muckrack and on IMDB for my appearance on America's Book of Secrets on the Discovery Channel. That appearance was related to my research into the Mormon religion, their practice of by proxy baptism, which is baptizing the souls of the dead using a living human as a stand-in. Many people don't realize that or know about it. Uh, and their practice of collecting and storing the information of everyone's ancestors in the world in their underground vault in Utah. For what purpose they do this, I have no idea. But with that, combined with their belief in by proxy baptism, one could be forgiven for suspecting that the church has a plan to eventually rebaptize the entire world as Mormon. Maybe they see it as an effort to save the world from hell. Who knows? What else is there to know about my background? Well, I believe wholeheartedly in gun ownership for personal protection. And once a month, I shoot at the range to make sure my skills are honed because they're easy to lose without practice. I've also always been an outdoorsman, a distance hiker, and a hunter. Although once we had two children, I lost a lot of those skills and my health started to decline. 
At 42 years old, after an annual physical, the doctor informed me that I had high cholesterol, high blood pressure, was pre-diabetic, approaching obese, and apparently had liver enzymes te that tested in such a dangerously high range that I had to be sent to a specialist for a second opinion. The specialist appointment would be six months later, so I decided to turn my life around in that moment and work to reverse everything that had gone wrong. I took up weightlifting and reestablished my habit of distance hiking. I also added Kung Fu to the mix to improve my speed and flexibility, not to mention to improve my ability to protect my family. By the time six months rolled around, all health markers were back to normal and I had lost significant weight. My hiking had also become a new passion and something I did every weekend, so much so that I started posting videos on YouTube to share the beauty of these hikes with the rest of the world. In 2023, some of my YouTube viewers asked me to help search for summer wells. I realized that my new passion could actually be used to contribute some good for the world. I had always wanted to give back to the community, but never could find anything I was truly passionate about. But being a hero for the missing, what better passion could a person have? So I decided to use my physical abilities and the research skills I've developed over the years to try and find missing children in East Tennessee. These searches and research eventually proved to be so time consuming that after obtaining my brown belt in Kung Fu, I decided I had to leave the Shyland school I was attending to be able to focus more on my searches. But I do continue practicing martial arts privately. I do miss Mullins a good deal though and all the friends that I made at that school. These days, I search for the missing almost every weekend and even some afternoons when weather permits. I use underground cameras, extension poles with lights for caves, crevices, holes, and tunnels. We're working on training Moon to work as a scent dog, and I'm currently working on obtaining a commercial drone pilot license. Jen has also joined the search to offer her unique ability to sense places where bad things have happened. She's my compass to reduce thousands of potential acres to smaller search areas. Where do we search? We search mountains, on and off trail, creeks and rivers, We'll crawl through a swamp if it means we can get back one missing child. Our team includes my wife and I, other researchers who we've come to trust enough to join our team, a small circle of other empaths like Jen, and a military veteran who has offered to help us with dealing with law enforcement or obtaining resources like divers or physical security. She's also been in much needed moral support when things get especially difficult. Our approach will always be to join forces with good people who are only interested in finding the missing and to block all drama and hate channels that only want to talk about other people rather than focus on the missing. Our goal is to block the voices of hatred from our space and to be a force for God to work his wonders in the world. We keep our minds and hearts open to God so that he can use us to achieve his will. If that's a miracle, we'll celebrate. If it isn't, will trust in his divine timing. If you're here for that too, then please subscribe, like, and share this channel with others you believe are interested in the same thing. We also do accept donations to cover expenses like gas, hiking gear, advanced search equipment if possible, online research tools, wear and tear on my Jeep, and maybe one day a boat and sonar equipment. As a team, I believe we can achieve great things. As a community, I believe we can achieve the impossible. Always remember, it always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you all for watching, and both Jen and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Hey. Yeah, let's see how you do under pressure. Oh. I've been wanted this forever, I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me, brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the better, okay. hey. yeah. ain't no errors baby, it's a new era, I wake up early feeling rich like I'm Kesha, I get to the paper boy, extra, extra. work with me, you know that I got it, come with me, let's take a trip to the islands, we up on the jet, we'll do more than just fly on it, stand on that hill, you gon' die on it, Boom. Boom. baby I'm not one of them, you should try on it, miss me with all that I'm on it the next, yeah. whip this up, I send you back to your ex, but good luck with that, this is big as it gets. Okay. Let me
Britney shoot a whole clip. Firepower in this coalition. We just turned the field into a demolition. It was desolate, but I had premonition. I was training for war every exhibition, every extra mission, every enemy listening. Get off my dick. I got bad intentions. Make it right every wrong, and I'm back with a vengeance. I show you the ropes. Peace in my town, I can show you the coast. Up in the shots if they wanted to smoke. If you know, then you know. Suit it up, my whole team do the same. Don't you forget who created the game. Ready for war, I was born with grenades. The trenches were soldiers are made. Let's see how you do under pressure. Let's see how you do under pressure. Give them a name to remember. Hey, let's see how you do under pressure. Let's see how you do under pressure. A moment can live on forever.